morning. Oh, good. That's nice. I like that. Thank you so much for being here this morning. My microphone working? Yeah. Um, first of all, I have a disclaimer or whatever you want to call it. It's going to be hot. Our air conditioner, something's wrong with it. We thought it was fixed. Dave turned on the air Friday morning. So just be calm. Be cool. Okay? I just wanted to let you know we know it's warm. Okay? Um, well, we welcome you this morning as we celebrate the birth of the church, Pentecost Sunday. Now, um, just to let you know, we haven't really switched our protocols yet. We can be a little bit more relaxed, but we do have persons that haven't been vaccinated and have immune system issues. So just please continue to wear your mask when you're in the narthex and around other people. And of course, if you're going to sing, unless there's like a, nobody for miles in front of you, you just do the best what you think's right. And remember, our offering is still in the back. We're not passing the plate yet. Those are the announcements I have for this morning. So now we'll have our invocation. Come as tongues of fire to enlighten us. Come as fires too deep for the word to comfort us. Come as our advocate to guide us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Let us pray. Wind of God, present since before creation, fall on us now. Whisper to us. Shout to us. Comfort and guide us. Alight on us anew and revive our spirits to love and serve. Amen. Will you stand for our entrance hymn?
priest remained standing at the broom outside, which he had caught the thief, and they find it in your bulletin or at page 881 in your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitted at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our epistle lesson this morning is to be found in your pew Bibles on page 983, being the eighth chapter of Paul's letter to the Church of Rome, verses 22 through 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning and travail together unto now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait for adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The Word of God for the people of God. Will the children please come down? It's great to see all of you this morning, having you here. See the decorations? These are flames of fire for Pentecost. I even have a little thing there. Hey, Grayson. So today is Pentecost Sunday, and it's a day that we remember and celebrate, a very special day in the early days of the church. So I'm going to tell you what the Bible says about it. When Jesus told his disciples that he was going to return to heaven, he promised them that he would ask the Father to send another helper to be with them. That was a wonderful promise that Jesus gave his followers. But Peter, James, John, and Andrew, and the rest of the disciples, they didn't really know what Jesus was talking about. So after Jesus ascended to heaven, and last Sunday we celebrated Ascension Sunday, the Bible tells us that his followers were gathered together all in one place. And they were in that place because they were celebrating a Jewish festival called Pentecost where they bring an offering to God of their first fruits of the harvest, you know, the first things that they harvest. Suddenly they heard a sound like the rushing of a mighty wind. And next they saw what appeared to be tongues of fire. And they came to rest upon the heads of each one of them. That would have been pretty amazing if that's all that happened. But it wasn't. 
The Bible tells us that after the wind and the fire, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other languages. And the thing that was amazing was everyone there could understand what was being said, even if somebody was saying it in a language that you didn't know, someone else's language. It was amazing, and it was an amazing story about God sending the Holy Spirit. And what is really amazing is that the Holy Spirit didn't come that one time and then just go away. The Spirit still lives with us as Christ's follower. Where does the Spirit live? In our hearts. It does. And it's with us here today. The Holy Spirit guides us in the decisions we make each day. The Holy Spirit comforts our fears and gives us hope. And the Holy Spirit speaks to us when we're reading the Bible and helps us to understand what we're reading. The Holy Spirit is to help us. So we will listen to the Holy Spirit and do what the Holy Spirit leads us to do. I think this is a very exciting day, and because it's exciting, we're going to do something to celebrate. Not only did Krista and I come up here and do some decoration, but we made some streamers. You want to pass the basket? Everybody take one, one little streamer thing. And I've got red, orange, and yellow because it looks like flames, doesn't it? Can you guys do this with your streamer? Woo, woo. You get to keep it. You get to keep it. Okay. So... We're going to do something. We're going to sing happy birthday and wave our streamers as we say happy birthday to the church. Okay, you guys? And any of y'all can sing too, please. And Emily, you sing too. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. I sure hope when you sing happy birthday to your friends that you have a little bit more enthusiasm. Maybe you guys aren't awake yet, right? That's what it is. Anyway, it's okay. And you're going to get to take the streamers, but I want to pray first. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful to you for sending the Holy Spirit to live within us and to be our comforter, teacher, and guide. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, you guys can keep these streamers and it reminds you of Pentecost, okay? Oh, thanks. And now we move to our time of prayer, and before I have our prayer, I have some concerns that I want to share with you. Um, this week, we got a call from Alice Reinhardt, and her son-in-law, Charles Wilbanks, passed away on March 12th. He was Kim's husband, and... I, I don't know if any of you have been around them, but they both were hard of hearing and did sign language, and they've just been married for about two years because both of them had lost their spouses to cancer. So they're just devastated. That's just another loss because it wasn't that long ago that Eddie passed away. So please keep them in your prayers. The service was yesterday, and they lived in Dunn, North Carolina. So just please keep them in your prayers and maybe... Later in the week, give Alice a call, see if she's home yet. But that's just really, that's a lot on them. Also, I got a message from Michael Horn about his cousin, Julie Tyson Williams. And she is on our prayer list. We've mentioned her the past two Sundays. And she had surgery, brain surgery, but 
she's back in the ICU and she's having some problems and really struggling. So please keep her and her family in your prayers. We continue to ask for prayers for Lula Ann Davis, Elizabeth Presson, Pamela Turner, Eleanor Pesci, Lonnie Balkum, Elwood Green, Nancy Huntley, Lib Huntley, and Dot Huntley. And we're so glad to see Evelyn with us this morning after her being out for a couple of weeks. We want to continue praying for those with cancer, for their families and caregivers as they fight that battle, and also pray for those infected with COVID. People are still getting COVID, y'all. So we need to still be very, very careful, even though we have been vaccinated, possibly. You still want to wash your hands and wear your mask around maybe people you don't know well and, and stay three to six feet away from them, you know, depending on the situation you're in. I know y'all know all that, but I, I can't help but say it. And continued prayers for all those that are on our prayer list. We just lift that up. And um, also prayers for our graduates. Yesterday, um, Anson High School had their graduation. And so we lift up prayers for all those graduates. Um, and we'll be having their names in the newsletter, I think, coming up this week. So you can see all them. Let us go to God in prayer at this time. Holy Spirit, you carry our prayers to the heart of God. You place our feet on the path of peace. You stir our desire for the eternal presence. You open the way to deep truth. Like wind upon the water, like tongues of living fire, come, Holy Spirit, and abide with us. We pray all this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now before our ushers bring our offering forward, I would like to lift up a prayer for our offering. Let us pray. Almighty God, when we do not know how to pray, your Holy Spirit prays for us in sighs too deep for words. Hear our prayers for goodness in the world. Receive these gifts that they may help answer the Holy Spirit's hope for all creation. In your name we pray. Amen.
you may be seated. That's one of my favorite hymns. I just love that. I can't help smiling when I sing it. It's so beautiful. Well, our scripture today is from Acts. It's from the second chapter of Acts, verses 1 through 21. I'm going to be reading from the message, but if you want to sort of follow along in the Pew Bible, it's page 948. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. When they heard one after another their own mother tongues being spoken, they were blown away. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? And others joked, they're drunk on cheap wine. Well, then when Peter stood up and backed by the other eleven, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk, as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see vis visions. Your old men dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red. Before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous, and whoever calls out for help to me, God will be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The famous theologian Walter Brueggemann said, Pentecost is God's response to the power failure of the world. I don't know about you all, but I don't own an electric car, nor do I know very much about them. My mom and I were talking about it when I was home in April, and we were wondering, what if there isn't a place to plug in nearby? What do people do? Though I have noticed in my travels, there's more and more outlets available to plug in, and we even have one here in Uptown Wadesboro that I know of. But I was reading this article about electric cars and realized there's another problem that I never really thought about. The charging ports for the cars are all in different places depending on the maker. You know, like when we go to a gas station to fill up our gas-powered car, then we know it's either on the left or the right and sometimes in the rear. It used to be in the rear. I don't know if it is anymore but we sort of know where to put the gas in. But where do you put the charger into your electric car? 
It could be on the front, it could be on the back, it could be on one of the sides. So in Korea, Hyundai decided they were going to figure out what they can do, and they were building some public charging stations in Seoul. And they wanted to be able to, you know, anyone from any brand that had any brand of electric car be able to use it. So they went to a consulting firm, and they designed a universal charger that would easily work with any electric car. They called it the Hyundai High Charger. But you know what inspired their design? Car wash, self-serve car washes. Because when you get the sprayer, it's hanging down from the top and it can rotate around and do all sorts of things. So that's what they did. They created this charger that had a beacon and it had this glowing halo and the halo would rotate or something like that and drop the charging cable in just the right place depending on the make and model of your electric car. A universal charger. Well, I just read to you from the book of Acts, and it tells us that there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And I'm not going to list all those names again because I was lucky to say them right in the first place. But all those people more variety than what you find today in electric cars, that's for sure. The first followers of Jesus were just one brand of Jew. They were Galileans. They weren't the most highly educated residents of Jerusalem, and most people expected their language abilities to be limited. But God was at work on a surprising design. The followers of Jesus were all together in one place, we read that in Acts. They had come together to celebrate the Festival of Weeks, Pentecost, which was focused on God's gift of the law to the Israelites. Suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, is what it says, of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. God was determined to fill them with power. The Holy Spirit came with the rush of a violent wind like the wind from God that swept over the face of the waters on the first day of creation, as we read in Genesis. The Spirit danced with divided tongues as a fire like the burning bush that revealed God to Moses. A bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. The Galilean disciples began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability, making it possible for them to communicate with devout Jews from every nation. The Holy Spirit was a universal charger. And that same spirit is available to us today. And it is charging us in the same way that it charged those first followers of Jesus. Our challenge is to receive what the spirit wants to offer us and then to share that divine energy with others. We are get, being given this Holy Spirit High Charger, uh, not that Hyundai High Charger, but the power to be put in just the right spot. First, the Spirit is a creative force in our lives, just as the wind of God was a creative power in the making of the heavens and the earth. In Acts, the Spirit creates the Christian community, which is why Pentecost is sometimes called the birthday of the church, like we sang happy birthday. Notice that God's spirit is poured out on a collection of believers. The Holy Spirit is not a personal gift from God that each believer prioritizes, privatizes, excuse me. A biblical professor, Robert Wall, said that. 
The fact that the Spirit appeared to a group is the distinguishing mark of a people belonging to God. You know, we tend to have individualistic view of faith in the United States, and many people talk about having a personal relationship with Jesus, and there is nothing wrong with that. But what was created by the Spirit on Pentecost is a distinctive and powerful community faith. The challenge for us as the Christian community is to be simultaneously both one and many. That means we are one in our worship of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but we are many in our expressions of the faith because we are connected to the Trinity as Christians who come from a wide variety of backgrounds. One and many. That may seem like an impossible contradiction, but remember that the triune God is also both one and many. One God in three persons. And God's own self is a single God who is also a community made up of God the Father, the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We need to remember that the Holy Spirit came on Pentecost to a diverse collection of believers, and this Spirit created something new and powerful, the Christian community. And next, the Spirit shows us that God is right in front of us. Just as the fire of the burning bush told Moses that God was present in his life, on Pentecost, the Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each one of them. And that fire was impossible to ignore, and it brilliantly showed the power of God was with them. And you know, the fire like that, that's nothing new in Holy Scripture. When God liberated his people from captivity in Egypt, the Lord went in front of them, in a pillar of fire. And then the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. When the prophets Elijah and Elisha were walking along, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. The Lord will come in fire, promises the prophet Isaiah, and his chariots like the whirlwind. And in a vision in the book of Revelation, John says that the eyes of Christ will be like a flame of fire, pillar of fire, devouring fire, a chariot of fire, a flame of fire. What unites these blazing sights? All are signs of the presence and the power of God. Again and again, God comes into the middle of human life and appears to us. And sometimes these appearances are brilliant, like tongues of fire on the day of Pentecost. And sometimes they're much more subtle, like the squeeze of a hand, an encouraging word, an expression of forgiveness, a statement of love. But whether God comes in blazing fire or in warm words, God is present and powerful. The promise of Pentecost is that God is with us, always with us. And this is true for all Christians, not just the ones that are labeled Pentecostal or charismatic. It echoes the promise made when Jesus was given the name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. God is our universal charger and gives us the healing and help we need in every time and place and situation. 
Finally, the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to communicate with people of every race and culture, just as it enabled the first followers of Jesus to connect with the diverse Jews of Jerusalem. The Apostle Peter quickly discovered that the gift of the Spirit was not a private gift to him. It was given to him so that he could share God's deeds of power with others. So taking a bold stand, and this is where we see Peter sort of come out of his shell, so to speak, and not say the silly things that he did before. But he announces to the people of Jerusalem, in the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Yes, the spirit was coming not I mean, coming to fill not just Peter and other followers of Jesus, but this diverse group of sons and daughters, of young men and old men, and even men and women who were slaves. All of the cultural barriers that had previously existed were breaking down now. And Peter said to them, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Holy Spirit is calling us to break down barriers and share God's energy with others. Whether it's providing food to a hungry person, a ride to someone needing to go to the doctor or the grocery store, teaching children about Jesus Christ, helping a person new in the faith to grow, all to a new community that we don't reach at this moment. Who knows where the Spirit will lead us next? You know, we become content or settled in in holding worship for ourselves and, and Bible studies and discussion groups to people that are already here in the church. But what the book of Acts is challenging us is to take from God as the universal charger and we become universal charger of God's love and connect with others outside of our four walls, others that may not be just like us. The Holy Spirit remains a creative force in the world, one that is continuing to form the Christian community. The flame of God's presence is always with us. It's always working powerfully in our lives. And the Spirit pushes us to reach outward, sharing that divine energy with others. A high-charge Holy Spirit, one that fills us and fills others with the almighty power of God. Amen.
Well, we promise we will work on this air conditioning situation this week. And I was just thinking, um, I really didn't plan for it to be so hot in here while we have the flames of fire, the tongues of fire. Did anybody else think of that? Yeah, a few people probably. Hear this benediction. May the living waters of the Spirit flow through your body. May the burning fire of the Spirit warm your heart. May the rushing wind of the Spirit fill your lungs, inspiring you to new words and deeds, all in the name of the living Christ, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We pray, amen.